I'm Dr. Kevin Thompson and here we are in the Fisheries Independent Monitoring's uh, Trophic Ecology Lab, or as we call it, the gut lab. And here the idea is that we study the diets of fish and what they're eating uh, through space and time. All of this requires a lot of data, counts, age and growth, and a major part of that is diet data. Because we know these fish are eating each other, it's important to know what prey are important at what times and where. So what we do is we're taking stomachs from fish that we're already sampling for fecundity or age and growth data or mercury data already. We bring them back in the lab preserved and then we look at them visually in the scopes to estimate what they're eating and how much. Say here for something large, we have a stomach of a red drum and you can very clearly see that it ate a very large sea trout. So we have these important interactions where a managed fish that we care about is eating another managed fish that we care about. And estimating that rate of interaction is important. We have four full-time employees identifying stomachs. They're all experts in taxonomy, particularly inverts and fishes. To date, we've studied over 300 different species of fish predators in their diets. We've observed almost 2,000 different types of prey in all the stomachs taken from uh, Florida's waters. The data so far have contributed to a number of important ecosystem models created by the stock assessment group here at FWC. This has gone on to support research that shows the effects of, say, red tide on red grouper, population biomass responses, as well as a number of other multi-species modeling goals. So now I'll introduce you to one of our analysts, uh, Julianne Knight. She's been here for 15 years uh, studying the diets of fish in the state of Florida and is a very skilled researcher in this regard. So she'll show you an example of how we work up stomachs and things that we see when we look at them. Hi, I'm Julianne Knight and I am a biological scientist here at FWC. And today I'm gonna to show you how we go about doing a gut sample here in the gut lab. So I opened up this Janus greasius or a gray snapper stomach and I rinsed out its contents into this Petri dish so I can identify what is inside. Once I um, rinse out the Petri dish, I actually run it through a sieve because a lot of times it's very cloudy and you can't see what the distinguishing characters are in some of these uh, organisms that it ate. And that way it clears out the Petri dish and you can see it's a very nice picture uh, of the organisms. My job is to identify each one of these animals to the lowest practical tax on that I can. In this particular specimen, we have at least three different shrimp as well as a fish. I also go through each one of these grids after I'm done with the large organisms and try to find smaller organisms that uh, might not be recognizable, but I do that with the microscope. This is a fish. However, you can't really tell it's a fish. If you look carefully, his jaw has started to come off and we can identify a lot of fish by their jaws alone because their color, their scales, their lateral lines, their fins, all that stuff goes away when it's digested. But you can see here that that jaw remains intact. So it's just kind of putting a big puzzle together. It's very important for us to maintain these time series of, of data because we don't know what the future problems will be in terms of the ecosystem issues coming up in the state of Florida. So by maintaining diet data, on many species throughout the years from many different places, we can then address those questions better when we have problems with environmental perturbations or fishery stock changes or management changes.